Today, we'll be reviewing the challenge short circuiting a loop. Let's start by reading the prompt out loud. Complete the function holidays that accepts an array of strings and iterates through the array. If the array contains the string October, return happy Halloween. Otherwise, return the string have a great day. Do not use a variable to store the result that you're returning. Okay, let's start by discussing our high level strategy. So we know that our function holidays is going to accept an array of strings as an input, and we know that its output is going to be one of two strings. So we're going to iterate through the input array, checking each element to see if it is the string October. If at any point we find the string October, we're going to short circuit the loop, which means end the loop as soon as we find a match without having to check the remaining elements. And we'll do that by returning happy Halloween. If we check every element in the input array and don't find October, we'll return have a great day. So now we have a strategy. Let's write out some pseudocode to help guide our code. So first up, we're going to declare a function holidays. Uh, that accepts uh, one argument, an array of strings. Inside the body of this function, we're going to use a for loop to iterate through that input array. And in the block scope of the for loop, we're going to use a conditional statement to check each element of the array uh, for the string October. Right, we're looking for that target string. If the current element is October, then we want to return Happy Halloween. Otherwise, if we make it all the way to the end of our for loop and we haven't found the string October, we'll instead return Have a Great Day. Excellent, let's go back in now and write the code. So first up, we'll declare a function with the label holidays that accepts one argument, an array of strings. We'll call that R of strings. Inside the body, we're going to use a for loop. So in our for loop, let's initialize I to zero. We'll write our breaking condition. So we want this loop to run for as long as I is less than the length of our input array, R of strings. And with each iteration of the loop, we will increment i by 1. Then inside the block scope of our for loop, we're going to use a conditional, which is an if statement, to check each element of the array one by one for the string October. So what we'll actually check is if array of strings at index i is strictly equal to the string October, so if the element we're examining in our for loop currently is the string October, will return happy Halloween. If we make it all the way through the loop and I is incremented with each loop, we're not finding October. Once we reach the breaking condition and we exit out of the for loop, we'll only reach this code if we haven't found the string October. So down here, outside the for loop, we'll return, have a great day. Excellent, so let's go ahead and uncomment these test cases and execute the code. We would be, we're expecting from line 16's test case, we're expecting happy Halloween as our first output, and then we're expecting have a great day as our second output. So let's run the code. We see that we get happy Halloween and have a great day, and we see that we pass all of our test cases as well. Now that we've seen short circuiting a loop in action, Let's talk about why this strategy is important. So imagine we call our holidays function and we pass in an array of 1,000 strings where the very first string is October. Now on the first iteration of our for loop, when we find the string October at index zero, there's no need for us to check the remaining 999 strings in the array, right? And since functions in JavaScript can only return a single value, we can use the return keyword like we did on line seven 
to stop the threat of execution as soon as we meet our conditional, which in this case is finding the word October. That strategy is what we call short-circuiting a loop, and it helps to make our code more efficient.